We labored to rid the Church of England of the vestiges of papal influence. Despised as Puritans, we suffered persecution and were forced into exile. In the year of our Lord, 1620, we left Europe on a religious mission to establish a godly government. In Plymouth, we boarded Mayflower, an ark that would carry us to the promised land. Soon, we were besieged on all sides by the treacherous ocean. Scurvy and fear of imminent death accompanied us for the remainder of our journey. We barely reached the new world alive after months on the high seas. The fear of retribution plagued our minds. Our countrymen had already warred with local tribes over this land. Many of us, too, believed we were not destined to share it. Famine and sickness struck our colony. We resorted to stealing food from the natives. The whole settlement feared the violent wrath of their war parties. Instead, one of them befriended us. Squanto spoke our language. Despite previously having suffered in slavery at the hands of our kind, he arranged for us to trade with the people of the First Light, thus saving our very lives. They introduced us to the beauty and bounty of our unforgiving surroundings, but most settlers still refused to see them as equals. Others would only deal with them if they commit to his word. Shall peace be sustained by sturdy plowshares or instruments of warfare? Well, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Colonize. This game is now new on Steam as of today, releasing in a prologue version that you can download today. And we did take a look at this game just a few days ago, but the development team has been paying close attention to our previous live streams and has made some improvements and some changes and some things that will make it a little easier to survive your first winter when you give it a try today. Now again, remember this is a prologue, so it's somewhat of a demo that you can download where we can colonize the Americas in the 1600s going from uh, Plymouth all the way to Bermuda and I think Charleston and a few other historical locations trading with the natives and uh, going on expeditions to also find other settlements and also defend ourselves militarily against French and Dutch raids too. So in the future of the game there will be walls that you can build, troops that you can train, weapons that you can buy and a council that you can have for uh, limiting uh, food rations and doing other sorts of emergency measures in order to try to keep everybody alive. Well here today I'm going to show you with a few of the changes that the developers have made since our previous live stream the best way to try to survive your first winter in the game and a few other tips and tricks that i found out through my playthrough so welcome aboard thank you very much for subscribing thanks for leaving a like and thanks for joining me on our adventure here today first and foremost we're going to go over a few of the buildings that are important to know and everybody should start with the same settlement no matter what uh, and of course we have ourselves over here a cellar where food is stored we have a warehouse where resources are stored we have a shelter where our people will stay and we have an inn where people will eat their meals at nighttime as the inn will do a full-time job of preparing food and storing it for everybody to uh, come to after their full day of work. Well, if you're familiar with games like Banished, of course, this will all be too familiar with you uh, knowing things like, for example, preparing to cut down trees and create firewood. And those are some things that aren't yet implemented in the game just yet. But in the future, the developer will include the ability to make clothing and have firewood and such. So at least a little easier to survive your first winter now with food being the most important thing uh, to get yourself through the first winter, which will be quite challenging already. We're going to go ahead and make a little road to the port where this ship over here will provide us with wood, firewood, planks, and stones if we happen to trade for it. And so that's the first thing that we're going to do then is go to the trade menu after the expedition menu is the trade menu where we're going to then trade leather and tobacco. Now leather and tobacco, as far as I know in the game, do nothing for crafting or happiness for your people. You'd imagine if you had tobacco, perhaps people could uh, use that in a pipe or whatnot. It would raise their happiness. Leather, you'd think, could be used for clothing or for shoes or whatnot. But for now, we're going to sell that and send that back to the old world as we then prepare to purchase some things that we'll need. First and foremost, the most important things in this game are wood 
and stone. These are very uh, time consuming to gather and very important for building shelters in which we can have our people expand. So we're going to go ahead and purchase a few planks then just to add a little bit more to our inventory. Maybe uh, we'll purchase about maybe 10 and we'll try to also do the same for uh, a little bit of stone to try to bring us up to 90 is what we have right now in our uh, bank account. So we'll bring it as close to 90 as we can. And there we go, an even trade. So our workers at the warehouse will go to do that. Now the shelter works just like how a um, shelter would work in Banished where everybody in your camp or everybody in your settlement will live here until you build homes for them. And they're not able to find each other and get married and move to a home until they go to the inn. So essentially, everybody lives at the shelter. They'll go about their days and they'll go and uh, find each other and find love at the inn. And then they'll want to move into a home that you build out here. So very important to get started very early in building homes for everybody. And here's why. In your camp, everybody starts at about the age of between... Uh, 20 and 30 with a few of them being uh, 30 and 32 and the game works like this in a 24 hour period as you see the clock in the lower left corner right now we're starting at 6 a.m. so once we reach a 24 hour cycle of being at midnight it'll then become a new month which will be June of 1621 and in that time in the course of a month your people will age several years so a few hours in the camp which will equal a day actually equals a month, which for your people equals several years. And if they're too old, they're not able to procreate. They're not able to have children. And that is the only way for people to come to your camp at the very moment. And so even though we have ourselves a ship here, nobody will come off of it and no ships will arrive. So we have to be completely self-sufficient. So happiness, shelter, food, all incredibly important, but more importantly, keeping your people away from buildings that create unhappiness. For example, the warehouse gives you a negative 10, but the cellar gives you a plus 7, and also the uh, inn gives you a plus 5. So if you happen to build a house somewhere within the radius of the inn, but not within the radius of the uh, warehouse, for example, which doesn't seem to have a negative buff to it, uh, then you'll be all right. So the best thing to do would probably be to try to build a house somewhere close to the inn because it actually has a, uh, a field of effect. So we'll go ahead and get started by building uh, maybe a couple houses for our people. But more importantly, I love the UI in the game. Very good to be able to see what you've got access to, for example, woodcutters and sawmills and stone cutters people that will um, or jobs that will employ people to get you basic resources and of course food will be a very important thing as well but that's why we're going to do hunting so we can produce leather for future uh, trading so we're going to go ahead and get started first and foremost with the woodcutter so we can continue to provide building materials for our camp so we'll instruct the people to go up there and work we'll take a few people off the cellar because we don't need them uh, more than one to deliver food from the cellar to the inn. That's their only job, is to bring food to the inn until all the input is full, which in this case will be meat, fish, bread, potatoes, eggs, and corn. Those are the things that your people uh, require to eat. Everything else you can sell. Uh, aside from barley, which you might want to keep for pigs, but you're not allowed to sell that anyway. In fact, on the buy menu, it does say that you can sell uh, firewood as well, or rather buy not sell, but buy firewood, uh, which is completely useless at the moment. The developer has not yet put in uh, the warmth system, but that is something we'll have to do in the future, as well as giving our people lots of clothing. Now, food is a lot harder to come by this time. They've made it so that way people consume a little bit more, but that's why we're going to be building our hunting tent right away. So we're going to go ahead and get first started with the woodcutter. We're going to assign a few more people uh, jobs at the uh, warehouse if we haven't already, which we have, and we got somebody at the inn. So essentially what we're going to do here so we're going to have the person who works at the inn work the night shift. We're going to have everybody who works at the uh, warehouse work the day shift. We're having them work from 6 a.m. to 1800. And we're having the uh, inn kind of do the opposite. And we're going to have the uh, seller kind of do somewhere in between. So that way that worker can deliver food all night. But also get a chance to go in for a bite to eat as well. So they'll kind of have a little bit of their, a quarter of their shift after work be where they can eat right here. Just before daytime or before daybreak. Now, building paths in the game at the moment doesn't necessarily do anything, but uh, I love how it looks laid out. In the future, we will be able to build walls and our people will follow this pathing, but right now they don't. There are fences, though, so you can kind of make it so that way you're, it'll force your people to go along the fence. It says people can't cross the fence, so be careful where you place it. So if you wanted to make sure that they stayed on a certain road, you can kind of control their movement that way. But in the future, the AI should be able to follow the road, so that way, of course, they'll be able to travel faster. For now, it's free and it builds immediately, so it's kind of more for your own organizational purposes to see where is a building connected and completed, etc., etc. All right, we got ourselves uh, everything ready to go to build the first uh, woodcutter, so we're going to make sure that we prioritize that. We'll build first the woodcutter, and then we'll go ahead and build ourselves a house, and we'll also then advance into building a 
uh, sawmill, which will give us planks. So the most important building materials right now are wood, aka logs, planks, and stone. And uh, importantly, it is good to keep an eye on this, which is new from our last episode, which, if you're joining for the first time, welcome then. Uh, Eleven people are in our camp. Before, it did not show the population, so if this drops for any reason, there is a chance that uh, somebody has died due to, well, at this case, it should be only because of food, but also sometimes the game can give a false uh, trigger for somebody's health being low. Eventually, our people will uh, age to the age of 99, and at 100, they will die automatically. There's, there's no need for a burial at the moment, but uh, eventually, cemeteries and some other things like that will come along, and at the age of 10, your uh, children can then work as an apprentice at a job where experience is incredibly important. Now, the developer joined us during a few of our live streams uh, that we did previously, and they answered a lot of questions, both of which you had and also which I had. So if you have any questions about the game or if you want to clarify anything that you've learned, please do comment down below, because one thing that we learned that was really important is that experience from a job uh, is an incredibly important thing. In other words, once somebody becomes 10, or as soon as you can, if you put them on woodcutting, for example, and they work as a woodcutter for a very long period of time, eventually they become very skilled at it, and they do their job faster and faster and faster. So instead of having a school on learning how to cut wood, they actually go out and kind of uh, shadow the workers doing that and eventually work the job themselves to where they can become incredibly efficient. Right now we have ourselves the workers from the warehouse taking all the things off the boat that we ordered. Right now no animation for the boat going back and forth, but eventually we will be able to trade back and forth with different types of uh, settlements along the coast of Massachusetts here through Cape Cod, etc., all the way to the uh, south down here as well. So uh, for now we can try to trade with natives or other settlements with the things that they require. So hopefully there'll be more to do with the boat in the future, which I'm very excited for. So as you can see, people going straight for the construction site rather than the um, uh, rather than taking the road. All right, we're going to get our woodcutters on woodcutting duty immediately so we can make more logs. And since they're done with that, we're going to start with our next important building, which will be uh, a couple of homes. So we'll try to build those around the uh, settlement here. Now, there are dangers to our camp, or there will be in the future. Like, for example, uh, there will be uh, bears and other things that wild animals will more than likely be a threat to your camp. And eventually the French and the Dutch will attack, as well as uh, possibly uh, going to war with other, uh, other tribes that may be unhappy with you. If you happen to have disagreements, you can try to make peace or war as needed with anybody. But, of course, those demands may differ, so... Uh, there may be a threat of invasion to your camp as well. Here's one of the expedition buildings that we're going to build to try to uh, make a, a better positive relationship with those factions. So we'll see about that soon. But we're trying now to make sure that we build within the um, area of the uh, inn to give our houses a little bit of a boost. So now that those are going, uh, the shelter, though, gives negative 15 happiness. But that's only to the people living there. So as soon as they move out, it will be in a much better uh, place uh, be a happiness. We'll be we'll be a lot more happy. We're gonna go ahead and build our sawmill down here, so that way we can convert those logs into planks, and we're going to also build our hunting post, so that way we can take all of the uh, local animals, hunt them down for meat and leather, and trade that for the ship, as we mentioned before. We'll go ahead and make sure both of those get constructed. Probably making the sawmill a higher priority than the homes because we're going to need those planks. So uh, there is no way to pause a home at the moment. So you can't really do blueprinting and you can't really um, prioritize homes in a queue. So you, you can't do home one, two, three, four. You'll have to then just do kind of all the houses at once and maximize with priority. So right now the sawmill requires 40 logs, 12 stones, and 15 planks. So if we ran out of planks, we wouldn't be able to make any more unless we make them at the sawmill. So the sawmill essentially requires the resource that it produces in order to be built. So that's kind of a, a long time thing. Now we also want to get people um, born as quickly as possible too in this game. And since they grow rather quickly within a few months, we should be able to have people working at uh, farms and whatnot. So we're going to first go with having hunting take place. And then eventually we can go on to things like, for example, farming. Now keep in mind, farming in this game will cancel itself out when the winter seasons come. So you, even though it says a wheat field down here, we can still have different types of crops growing. We can have corn, potatoes, we can have cash crops like the tobacco. And that's a great thing because then uh, we can go ahead and grow multiple things at one time. You can have two employees working at the, um, at the uh, farm and have it go a lot faster 
uh, than you would you would think. So, all right, right now we've got uh, people in the sawmill, and everyone else should be delivering things to the remaining homes. We'll try to get these people out of the shelter and see if we can start having some children right away. 11 people is great, but it's not enough to do all the jobs just yet, so we need to make sure we've monitored everything and gave it the uh, correct uh, working hours that we want to do here, so that way they can work during the day and go out to the inn at night. All right, so according to this, we've got everyone employed as two woodcutters, a carpenter, which is working at the sawmill, somebody working as an innkeeper, and everybody else assigned to the warehouse and or the cellar. Uh, does consider the people working at a cellar to be also the same as the warehouse in terms of it labeling them as a um, as a laborer. Now look at this, the working filter, very important too, by the way, you can eventually have auto hiring in the game where people who are more skilled at things like, for example, strength or intelligence can work at a job that you assign. So obviously some jobs are going to be a little bit more about skill and others will be a little bit more about brute force. Like, for example, the logging camp being a little bit more about just clear-cutting trees, but maybe perhaps the uh, tailor or the cooper being a little bit more about uh, being intelligent as well as how they manage their materials and how they go and produce things and, of course, can be sold back to the old world as well. All right, the hunter is being built with 36 planks being required. It's a very expensive building because it does provide a lot of money through the leather that you could sell. And the sawmill did a good job of providing the rest of the wood uh, planks that were needed from that. Now, eventually, the sawmill will process wood into um, into uh, firewood as well. But as you can see, the only thing it outputs now is one wood equals four planks. So it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good exchange there. Now, also, another thing to consider is that this has a large negative area of impact of negative 20. So make sure you don't build any sort of home nearby. Uh, I don't believe the... Uh, happiness affects the people who work at those jobs. So, for example, if somebody works at the sawmill, I don't think that gives them negative 20 happiness plus whatever negative happiness that the hunter gives. So, somebody who works at the sawmill is not going to experience a negative 25 and needs to be counteracted at the house. It's all about where they actually live. Now, we can also inc increase the uh, happiness of people who live near the church, too. So, that's another buff building. So, the cellar, the inn, homes, and... Uh, Unfortunately, not decorations. That's kind of more for your own uh, purposes, but at least it'll look nice. We're going to make a little road over here then. Just next to the inn. And keep in mind, the more cram that we put things together, the better it will be for when we go to defend the camp, because obviously the more close together the town is, uh, the easier it will be to put a wall around it, because it'll be a lot smaller. And the smaller the wall, the more people who can man it without gaps in between, and thus increasing your defenses and lowering the time it takes to build those defenses or repair those defenses as well. All right, food's going to be an issue here shortly. So uh, in daytime now, uh, as soon as it comes around, we will see people go back to working at the Hunter. So hopefully we'll have a few more people in homes, which are important. So we'll have a few more people uh, at the houses here, having children. So we should have a couple, uh, four couples move out. So there are four uh, women, I believe. This individual is a different uniform. I'm not sure why, though. Looks like everybody's wearing orange and blue, but I'm not sure what that is. But anyway, we've got uh, four women here, so at least we can have four couples who can then uh, go into the home. So if we build two more homes, uh, we'll have room for all the families. Now, once they have children, if their children grow up uh, to the age in which they can move out, which I believe is also age 10, they'll start working at, uh, living at the shelter and start working, and so they'll be out of the house, I believe. I'm not sure if there's an age for that move out, but that may be how it works as they are uh, moving out. A lot of twitchiness on the people as they walk around. The developer will work on buffing that out. And the developers, by the way, are from Europe. I believe, uh, I think it's uh, Slovakia working on this as well. Uh, a, a team from Slovakia, which is pretty cool to see. New people making new city builder games and, of course, survival games as well. This one being uh, much more challenging than, than, than your typical one. I don't want to remove too many workers from the warehouse, so we're just going to try to take two out of there. Um... The hunter can have three, and it's going to be incredibly important to get them assigned. But it looks like we've got, yes, people now being assigned to hunters as well. So they should match up. The two people who were let go from the warehouse are just switching jobs now to the hunter. So I hope that'll happen automatically. We'll kind of keep an eye on that. But we're going to make sure the hunter is also working from 6 a.m. Just so everybody can kind of go to the uh, inn at the same time. All right, lots of logs coming in, lots of lumber coming in. And now we'll have lots of... Uh, Lots and lots of leather coming in as well as food, so hopefully we can continue to store that. 
Here's our maximum on certain types of things such as meat. So in total, we can actually have 40 meat, 20 at the inn and 20 at the cellar. So uh, the faster everybody eats, the better. We can build ourselves another cellar too to increase that capacity. Uh, but the expense on that is uh, quite expensive with 20 stone, 12 planks, and 6 wood. Primarily what we want here, and of course the uh, hunter also has a little storage for meat at 15, but primarily what we want is the leather, which can then be transported to the warehouse for additional storage, or we can immediately uh, sell that, which we should. As soon as it goes to the warehouse, we can sell, and then we can go ahead and import some other stuff. Another thing we can sell is wheat. Since we don't necessarily have enough people to build a mill, and we don't really have enough people to work on a mill and whatnot, uh, wheat would then be turned into flour, and then flour could then be turned into bread. Additionally, some of your livestock may eat wheat, but usually it's, uh, I think, barley for the pigs and potatoes, and the chickens will eat wheat and possibly barley as well. But since we're a little ways away from that, we're going to sell that for additional uh, money, and we're going to also uh, grab ourselves some more supplies off the boat as soon as we can. If we click on the ship, we can actually see what may be on board. So it looks like everything so far has been delivered uh, to the warehouse, so we've got maximum supplies now. And we can see people moving out, excellent, into the uh, homes there. And we've got everybody as a job now. If there is a list under the job tab, then that means they are employed, so that's great. And we probably want to build ourselves a church soon, but I think what we really should do is get everybody a home first. And we'll try to build that somewhat uh, tight-knit for the uh, plan of building a wall around it. A defensive wall for our city. And we may be able to build a church here, too. We'll, we'll see. Maybe we can make a public well back there. Uh, just behind the inn. So that way we can have our people get drinking water. But really, it's only for the farm at the moment. I don't see anything to where the people need to put out fires just yet. But I could definitely see that being something in the future. Not really happy with where that's set up. Is there a way to demolish? I don't think so. But that's all right. That'll just be off a little bit. At least it will be built, and that'll be good. Let's see if there is actually a way to cancel buildings. Let's see if we delete. We cannot do that. Okay, so it looks like that's something they'll have to add in the future, too, is the ability to demolish or delete a building if you're not using it anymore and reclaim those materials. All right, four people at the warehouse. Important for when we make another purchase from the ship. Some more uh, houses going up, but now we really should start on farming. So let's build ourselves a farm here. Just next to the uh, cellar is probably a good idea. We'll build that probably right here. There we go. And once that's constructed, we'll also need a well. So we'll build ourselves a well here as well, pun intended. Now we can also do fishing in this game. We could do hunting. We can uh, grow things at the farm of different crops. We can also... As I mentioned, turn wheat into flour by putting it in the mill. So that's another useful thing. Although it takes a lot more time and you'll need a lot of resources to do that. This is kind of the preferred order so far. All right. And it looks like we have ourselves a new birth. Ah, yes, the Kirby family at it again. Excellent. Just like in our last video, Lovisa. Uh, Kirby and uh, Co Conan has had a barbarian. Congratulations. They now have their little son, Thomas. So watch how quickly he ages. He's already been... In the time we got the notification and clicked on the house, he's already aged one year. So uh, nine more to go, and he can enter the labor pool. And we can try to get more and more people uh, more and more happiness by being around that inn. They're in for a good time. Let's actually go ahead and make the farm a priority now. So that way, by the time that's built, we might be able to get some workers on that. And uh, we won't be able to use the farm, likely, until next year. Uh, because by the time it gets constructed, uh, some of the crops, I think, need to be manually harvested. So that's something that might need to change. We'll take a look at that. But beware that the farm has several slots that you can make different types of food in or grow different types of crop. You don't necessarily need to rotate those crop, but it is a good idea to have multiple different types of crop inside that farm. So for example, uh, having the um, farm grow barley for pigs, potatoes for your people, corn for your people, and then maybe tobacco for trading. You can also, of course, uh, bring meat from the uh, pig farm over to the inn. And the pigs will also procreate, so pigs and chickens in May will have offspring. That's another thing we learned from the developers that if you have them fed and they uh, survive until May. If you have 
uh, two pigs or two chicken. Actually, if you have zero, the way it is, uh, it may be a glitch or something, but they will eventually repopulate on their own. You can, you can actually buy uh, chickens and pigs from the respective buildings, but it will take a little bit of time for them to, uh, to be reborn. All right, we're going to go ahead and plant a few crops here. Let's go ahead and make some corn here. I think what we'll try to do is we'll try to do two of each crop just so we can have something in storage for food and then for the rest of these we will do tobacco and we will see if that's enough time for them to uh, grow. Now I believe the blue bar, the blue box is their water, uh, the uh, water level for the field and then there'll be a green box that will fill up around it showing you whether or not the uh, crop is ready and it looks like you will need to manually harvest. Before, I thought it perhaps was a fail-safe where if the winter was coming and a crop wasn't yet fully matured, you could at least harvest it before the season was over, so that way you didn't lose the crop. But it seems like it might just be an option to uh, have to use in order to manually instruct your people to harvest that crop. So we'll see what happens. So nobody's going to be working at the farm until the next morning. It looks like they actually recommend to work a little bit longer on this one. So let's go ahead and see if they can work a 15-hour day. It sucks, but... Uh, we're going to need to have them do it, so that way we can actually uh, get everyone to survive here. All right, Thomas is too young. He's now age three. But we should probably get one of the uh, laborers on that. So let's go ahead and take a woodcutter, Charles, and go ahead and assign him to the farm. Now, this is the biggest problem. This is why we need the population, because a lot of these jobs require two, perhaps three workers. A lot of the basic jobs, like the inn or the uh, cellar, really only require one. And now we see the uh, seller bringing over all the food that's needed. So more bread needs to come over, more fish. So he's bringing over uh, fish that will equal up to 20 now. And then, of course, he'll bring over the bread to which we have uh, 19 remaining. So he'll try to fill up the rest of that as quickly as possible from the seller. Kind of weird. He walks down here and then walks back into the cellar. <laughs> all right. The homes will be constructed tomorrow. And we're getting closer to our first winter. When the morning hits, it will be, yes, now it's August 1621. Very interesting to see how people survive back then. I think this game does a great job of acknowledging reality and history and lets you experience what some of the uh, initial shelters and settlements and uh, initial foundings of some of these historical sites were like. And uh, I guess this is the uh, hint at uh, Plymouth Rock over here, I suppose, huh? Maybe. Anyway. Wow, that is a heavy rainstorm. Well, it actually does fill up the... F it does look like the farm may have actually been watered slightly by that rain. The developers may have changed that. Let's watch again. All right. Well, it does look like the one farmer is doing a good job of planting these crops. We now need the well to be made. It looks like more homes are going up. We have, uh, it looks like two more possible couples to be uh, brought together there. So we'll do that shortly. As soon as those homes are complete. So we are making planks. We are making logs. We are making, uh, we are not making stone. But we should trade leather. And let's go ahead and trade that. Since it is a resource we will not need. But we will buy more wood. As we can easily turn that into planks. So we'll go ahead and buy probably about 80 of that. And we'll buy the rest of the stone that we might need. A lot of rain. 13, 15 stone, 40 wood. So now the ship has everything that we need, and the warehouse will bring that all over. And the houses are being built too. Very nice. Now, my hope is that eventually we can upgrade the different homes, and the developer has confirmed that homes can be upgraded as well to different materials in the future, and that, of course, will probably make them more fireproof and also will require less fuel uh, for the winter in terms of firewood since they'll be more airtight and can control that warmth and keep it inside a little bit longer. Looks like some people here need some more sleep. 
I would assume the person working there was uh, Steven, but I guess not. All right, more homes to be completed in the um, next couple of months here. Charles is saying that something is wrong with his health currently. Let's go ahead and pull back on his work a little bit. Now, as we can see here, his health is continuously dropping. Uh, it seems to be a happiness issue where he is completely zeroed out. And so his health zeroes out. So that's something that uh, might need to change in the future that the developer has kind of made us aware of. Energy is zero even though he was sleeping. People should still be able to get energy at the shelter. But his health should go up so long as he can return to the inn for a nice meal. Alright, lots of things stored at the inn. Food and entertainment, that's good. Now we just continue to gather resources for the winter and possibly build a church so the happiness can increase because we need we need more people in the camp. We need more people who want to live here. Or at least to have children, I should say. Try to build that somewhere near the houses there to give them a benefit. And we'll see if we can get that up. The last thing I want to get up as well as as important as the church is the expedition center so we can finally go out and do some trading so we'll probably put that down here it has an area of effect around it but it doesn't show whether or not that's positive or negative so I would assume since it might be a noisy building or whatnot we'll build it over there but we'll make the church the top priority for now so that will require 10 stones which we have 40 wood which we do not and it'll also require 60 planks, in which we're missing about 20. We're at 48, so a little more than that. Luckily, we have plenty of laborers there, so any extra labor can go towards the... Um, any extra labor should go towards the hunting now. And the logging. In fact, we should probably prioritize hunting first. Whoa. Apparently, SpaceX is doing a launch. All right. America. Okay, well, we have ourselves a, uh, yeah, a little bit of a winter storm. You can see temperatures now dropping to 2.5, possibly down to uh, probably 5 degrees below Celsius. So we're talking about sub-freezing temperatures, which could be affected by, oh, yes, it looks like there may be a storm here. So that's only going to get colder and colder. So imagine at this point... We'll have to manage food, we'll have to manage clothing, we'll have to manage firewood, we'll have to have a defense around the camp. We could possibly get attacked by, a, I don't know, a moose or a bear or something that gets a little curious coming into the camp. These things could happen and could cost lives. All right, we still need to make about 60 planks. I would like in this game uh, a limits option to be able to set the limits and then see over a building when we hit that. Whoa. Violent winter storm. Uh, 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 don't bring that over here. I've not seen them do that twitching uh, walk before. I think if we slow down, yeah, if we slow down time, they don't do that. So it must have something to do with the speed up function. Okay, so we're almost there with our materials. They got a long way to go, though. First they bring it to the warehouse, then they bring it to the uh, construction site, so. And I believe green means happy. So that's why we're building the church so close. We got an issue with health here. They're a little hungry, so they'll need to go to the uh, inn for work time, or when work time is over. And we should have plenty of food here for everybody. Potatoes, eggs, corn. Well, we have corn, potatoes, and meat coming in. And we want to work on that variety, but that church has got to be the first thing. Once we get the church up, then people will have more children, and when they have more children, we can fully fill these jobs. And so we can have everybody maxed out at the woodcutter, the sawmill, 
and more importantly, the hunter shack and the cellar too, more than likely. All right, there is plenty of food inside the uh, inn. Meat being brought in time after time. Happiness here is at 32. I believe if, if it's over 50, then they'll show up as green. Yes. Wow. Storms are violent. January 1622, we'll be able to use the farm soon enough. No option to destroy buildings, though. It would be helpful to maybe reclaim a building if you... Uh, perhaps you misclicked and accidentally wanted to build the church. That could be a waste of space because you can't build anything else there. Or maybe you finish it halfway and want to reclaim the materials. Back to the shop. Sell the remaining leather. and buy the rest of the wood that we'll need. Up to 62. I must say that's a pretty violent storm. Now we also need to assign somebody to work in the church as well. So once that comes along, we'll have to uh, make sure that we get a priest to sign there. Yeah, that's quite aggressive, I would say. All the other sounds are quite nice. That one, getting aggressive. Violent. It is a violent storm after all, so. All right, let's speed up time. And the only thing that needs to be delivered now is stones. So we'll see the completion of that and the arrival of spring very shortly. Well, it is spring. We've successfully survived our first winter. Waited until April then to continue on as we have ourselves a well that I snuck in back here, adding a whopping 10 happiness. That's just five less than the church. So the inn should be providing plus five. A home should be providing plus five. The well should be providing plus 10, and when completed, the church will provide plus 15. Now everyone's health is continuously dropping here, but we still have plenty of food in the camp, such as uh, meat and corn and whatnot being provided here at the uh, inn itself. Uh, but we need more and more people to get fish in order to get farming, in order to go on expeditions and whatnot. We need to make sure that they've got all the things that they need. We're going to make sure we prioritize the church again then, as they've delivered some of the materials here to the uh, expedition building, but we're still selling leather and we're also ordering more and more uh, wood from that so we're trying to as best we can to get everything set up for the church being complete so we can get more children that's going to be the only way to survive now it's over when everybody dies to death and as you can see they're pretty close some people are uh, down to uh, let's see the age of 60 and whatnot uh, barely anybody here at the age of procreation still with some people drop in health to 310 it all depends on how often or when they visit the um, when they visit the inn, which seems to be random as long as you can open the door. Um, but yes, we are now like trying to make sure that that's the case. So finding out about that well later, that would be, um, I think, a, a redo for how I would set this up. Uh, build two homes, build a well instead, providing you with plus 10. So you'd have the plus 5, plus 5 from the inn and the house, and then plus 10 from the uh, well, which would bring you plus 20. So if everybody drops down to... Uh, 80 or below well actually if they drop to 50 that's when they can't uh, you know have children anymore but at least it would uh, give you a buffer zone of 80 so if they're at 100 you'd have the plus 20 so they could drop down to uh, 80 or so before you probably should consider building another well which is cheap uh, I think they probably overlap but for three wood and 15 stone it's pretty easy to do so that'll be a good way to kind of continue that so change of plans then prioritize instead of the church the well the well the church just takes too many materials. It will keep them happy over time with the uh, uh, the priest. And it would be interesting if it actually brought in some uh, money for the the uh, settlement by, I don't know, somehow generating 
um, I don't know, something through the, the donations or whatnot that could go back towards building the camp or buying materials. But, um, yeah, it seems like everybody here, it's basically broke. They got nothing. So, and our leather is coming in less and less. It seems like the amount of money that we make from the hunter fluctuates too. So, uh, it might be dependent on the season. So if, uh, we're a little closer to the fall and winter seasons, they might actually, uh, produce more since those animals are migrating or whatnot. Maybe, maybe not. It all might de be dependent on many different things. But anyway, the church has almost got all the materials it needs plus the stone. So we'll go ahead and get that finished. So the expedition center, we will have to see what happens. I still want to, I still want to know. It's a complete mystery to me. And we'll be live streaming this game probably sometime later today too. So if you haven't checked the channel for this video, our previous video and other live streams, again, I must stress that uh, if you're interested in this one and want to see more, make sure you subscribe and check out more of this one because we'll be covering much more of it in terms of the buildings, the locations, and the ways to deal with what seems to be a rather obviously incomplete game where a lot of the challenges here, but the ways to navigate through it aren't necessarily there. Essentially, the road is built, but we have no car, so it's a long trek to get anything done. But eventually, when the developer adds more things, as they were mentioning, added they did want to add carts and uh, possibly wagons and horse and buggy. That way you could trade with other camps by building a horse and buggy and then sending it off the map after completing expeditions to then have your people uh, go out and sell goods to the neighbors or buy goods and bring them back in bulk, as well as having the ship maybe possibly take time to come and go and giving you much more money. Of course, this is all just a build that has to kind of give you the bare minimum. So a lot of the things that are intended or, or that are planned are uh, certainly not here. All right, we've got five more planks to do and 10 more stone. Uh, luckily, the expedition building doesn't really need anything other than an astronomical amount of planks. That is insane. But we've got everybody working at the warehouse now. Uh, unfortunately, happiness doesn't seem to be going up too much here at some of these homes. Mostly everybody is, uh, I think they're on happiness now is from their health, but their health only seems to go up when they eat a meal at the inn, as you saw that one go from seven to eight. So every time they go to the inn, it only goes up by one. Oh, actually, it's going up more. But I would assume then if you give them, if they have a higher energy, and if they, you go in there back for seconds? Jeez, ma'am, just eat all, eat all until you're no longer hungry. Looks like they'll go to the inn, go home, come back to the inn, go home. Uh, so long as energy and hunger are over 50%, that should then increase health. And of course, health will then increase happiness. And I think that's also directly tied to these other two. So four of those are connected together. Intelligence and strength are simply limitations for jobs. So uh, obviously, if somebody's stronger, they're going to produce more uh, wood from a lumber camp or a sawmill. And if they're more intelligent, then perhaps they could do something like um, maybe farming better or something because they can lay out the fields or work more efficiently, that type of thing. All right, we're going to buy some more planks here. We just need a few more uh, planks to be made at the sawmill. So all of our leather now has to be distributed to that. And it looks like we're very close to having that church done. And uh, three more uh, stone are in storage. So there must be some on the way. Yes, we're up to seven. Perfect. We're not stopping until we get that church done. We may lose some people, but again, we need to find the meta for this game. And I'm hoping in the future that uh, that is a bear. That's a bear. Get out of here, bear. Damn it. Get out of here, you damn bear. Get out of here. Jerk. Anyway, I got distracted all of a sudden for some reason. I don't know why. The grizzly fact, but at least I didn't have to uh, pause for very long. Anyway. So the farm is shut down. I don't think it's a good idea to farm yet until we've got our buildings up for happiness. Without happiness, you just can't get more people. And so hopefully there'll be a way for people to come into the camp from uh, the na neighboring, uh, maybe other failed settlements uh, will find their way here or something along those lines. Luckily, we haven't had a massive wave of death, but if the number does hit zero, it is it is game over. There is no saving in the game either, so every time that you run at the moment, it will have to kind of be a complete run. But again, these are features that will come soon, uh, undoubtedly. If the, if the developer wants to make a game that everybody likes, you've got to have those basic features there of saving, quick saving, uh, the ability to load, and to experiment too. That's one of the more fun things to know is... We've all made the mistake and banished of thinking that the first day that we're going to start, it's like, yeah, I'm going to build the blacksmith and the sawmill and I'm going to build a fishing dock and an orchard. Nope. You start with the gatherer and maybe the hunter and you pray that you have enough and then eventually things get easier and easier. And mods, of course, too. 
for games like that. All right, let's go ahead and add seven leather to our sails and add more wood to be purchased. There we go. And that'll be turned into planks or whatever else is needed. So it looks like we need one plank in order to finish this job. So let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our last goal. Let's finish that church. As soon as uh, people come over with the uh, plank, it should be uh, built rather quickly. And that'll be that. And hopefully that raises the happiness and we can pull out of this what feels to be a constant nosedive. Like the road is too small. There we go. Yeah, so and, and when it comes to building roads, of course, we can hold control in order to build roads of any different um, angle. You know, it's, it's grid-based for the most part, square to be around the square buildings. But if you hold control, you can, of course, uh, make roads that are somewhat curved by linking several straight roads together and creating a, a, a curve that way. All right, the church is now up and running. Can you believe that? All right. So now, well, it's not up and running. We need to assign somebody to it, but let's go ahead and get one person on the church. Would be nice if uh, we cannot click on this square to bring up the pool of available laborers. So, uh, and even when we fire somebody, it takes a while. In fact, I'm not going to have Conan do the... Uh, looks like he auto-assigned himself to the farm, which is interesting because that moments ago was not functional. So let's go ahead and get him off there. Good. All right. So hopefully... Oh, and I see some... Hap okay, now we're starting to see some greens. Okay. So the man and the woman in each house needs to be in the green. So now between the church... Actually, we need to give that to them in their free time, so that needs to be night. There we go. So between the church, the well, the inn, and the nearby uh, cellar, I would consider maybe in the future building the homes here... Putting a, put a well where we did and then build homes around here, trying to keep them close to the cellar, and then building sawmills and other industrial buildings far, far away. All right, cool. Well, sometime in the future, we're going to have to see what lies in store for us as we go on expeditions in the game. Can we use the boat? What types of adventures can we go on? Who can we trade with? What can we get from them? Will we get better prices? Who knows? Well, that is it for today's second first look, I suppose, at a new update for Colonize out today for all of you who are looking to get it. Again, it is a prologue on Steam. May 25th is when it releases for the little teaser. And then eventually, we hopefully, we'll see a lot of improvements to this game as well. Make sure you go down below and comment on what you want to see added to the game, what you think the developers could improve, and historical accuracies you'd like to see. And I will see you next time, everybody. Thank you for being here. Do we have ourselves any new babies? Oh, maybe soon. Maybe, baby. Let's take a look. Ooh, we're getting there right on the edge. Cool. All right. Improvements have been made. See you next time.